Hi everyone, in this video we will learn how to calibrate our model, what are the parameters through which we measure uh, the efficiency of our calibration and what are the parameters that affect the shape of the hydrograph. So let's begin. The first thing I would want to do is to add the calibration data here. So for that what you do is go to project and sorry go to, yeah go to project, click on calibration data and here I've already added so I'll just delete that for a while and go to browse so this is the calibration data this data would also be shared with you this data suggests what is the flow at uh, different time durations at conduit number 9 so that is what it is and you just need to click OK so what I also need to do is if uh, you already uh, if you have not done it uh, because my calibration data is uh, on hourly basis what I would also want to do is change the reporting step which we had earlier done to 15 minutes to 1 hour so you, you just can change it to 1 hour here and click OK so what will happen is your uh, calibration data would also be hourly and your uh, time step of calculation would also be hourly so this data is for conduit 9 as I suggested so let's draw a graph and see what this data looks like so we'll go to report oops i have not run this model so i will just quickly run it yeah so let me go to conduit now nine now let me plot a graph so this is link and i am looking at flow and once you click that you see that the blue points show the observed data and the red uh, line shows what is the model data so this is uh, observed versus model and you see that in the model data the peak is very high and also the peak is very for a shorter duration it doesn't elongate uh, unlike in the observed data so let's see what are the parameters which would affect this peak so first understand let's first uh, go and understand how to measure the efficiency of calibration so there's a parameter called Nash uh, Sutcliffe efficiency which is nothing but summation so 1 minus summation of all observed minus measured data raised to 2 for different times so let's say this is for R1 uh, what is the observed vis-a-vis -vis -vis what is measured and you uh, and you uh, raise it to power 2 and similarly for a second observation do the same thing uh, this divided by sum of observed data so of individual points minus the average uh, of observed data raised to 2 so this is called Nash Sutcliffe efficiency. It's one of the most uh, prevalent measures of uh, uh, measurement of calibration data. So let's first quickly go and check how uh, efficient our data is in terms of calibration. For doing that, what you need to do is uh, just hold on to this graph, uh, left click anywhere and just copy from this button. Copy here and go to data. And so you, you don't want it as a image file and therefore I want it as data and I'll copy on a clipboard and I'll quickly open an Excel sheet and just paste my data in the Excel sheet so let me open a new Excel sheet and just simply copy paste so now if you see the first observations 24 observations are my computed data and the 12 observations are my observed data because I have only entered 12 data in the observation field. You can go and check this data also if you want. So what you can do is go to calibration data and if you click on edit here, you will be able to see that for every hour we have entered the data in cubic meter per second or for conduit CO9. So this you can do for your data also, you can make your own file. Uh, dot, dot that file and enter your file also so let's go back and check what does my data look like so this is my data now what I need to do is as per the as per the definition uh, first I need to do <coughs> observed minus measured so let's go back so observed minus measured so this is my observed data sorry observed minus model so this is my observed minus model and raise to 2 raise to 2 and this I only need to do it for 12 hours so I'll just drag this 
for 12 hours. So this is for 12 hour data. So this is again, uh, this is simple Excel. So because we have dragged it, it shows uh, the differences of different cell. Uh, the second thing I need to do and then probably take a sum. So let's take a sum here first and before we move on to the next step. So this is the summation of the numerator and let's do the same for the denominator so denominator would be observed so denominator is observed minus observed average so average of my observed data so this is a 12 hour data so let me select all 12 hours close the bracket and now this whole term raised to 2 what we are doing here is just operationalizing the uh, definition of NSC so this is my data also, I need to ensure that the log cells are locked to get the average correct all the time. And this is my average and this is my value. So now if I do 1 minus, now if I go back and check my definition, 1 minus this by this, what I get is an NSC value which is negative. So this is a negative NSC value. So this is the summation here. Uh, which is positive and if I do the sum of observed uh, what I get is these values here 1.3 and therefore when I add this data uh, it shows me a negative value of NSE so that means there uh, is a lot of difference between my observed data and the uh, calibrated uh, observed data and the model data so let's see what can be done now so one of the things which uh, the manual suggests, the hydrology manual suggests that there are certain parameters like area of uh, subcatchment, the imperviousness of the subcatchment, which have some effect on the hydrograph. So we'll go back and see, and these uh, these parameters have significant effect on the hydrograph. So as the area increases, so does the runoff, and as impervious increase, imperviousness increases, so does the runoff. So these are some of the parameters which have area and imperviousness are some of the parameters which have direct impact on the uh, the peak. While if you look at slope and width, they have effect on the shape of the uh, hydrograph. So let's see and li let's go back and go back to our model and try changing some of these to see what are the effects on the peak. So. Uh, just to be careful this data is uh, basically created for this exercise uh, okay before opening the model what i need to do is i need to close the excel sheet so every time just remember when you open the excel when you open the model excel just remember to close uh, all the excel sheets or it will not save uh, the data will not be saved so this is just a tip if you're opening your swma model just ensure all excel program is closed so I'll go to Excel editor again. So in the Excel editor, what I'll do is, because I want to decrease my peak, so if you observe, uh, if you go back and look at the chart, your uh, model peak is much more than the observed peak. So I want to reduce that, and therefore I need to reduce the imperviousness area. Uh, like I said, this is just data created for the exercise. Uh, what I'll do, is I'll reduce the percentage imperviousness to by 60%. So what I need to do is just type 0.6, copy this and select all the data, right click, you'll have paste patient and just multiply this. So this will be 60% impervious. I will delete this, save this file and go back to our model. And now I can again run this model to see what are the change in the observed and the calibrated uh, observed and the model data so let's go back to report look at time series and see now if you see the data is much more closer to the peak so what happens is my peak and this data are closer uh, however the shape of both these uh, graphs is still quite different so now for changing the shape i'll take one parameter as the mannings n for impervious area and see what is happening if I change the value of Mannings. So I'll go to Excel editor again, go to the Mannings value. So let's say the impervious uh, data is, uh, so like I said, this is for the exercise. So I'm changing, it, increasing it. And 
let's see what are the impacts of this increase of n pervious on the data and similarly I'll increase this to point uh, let's assume my impervious areas are also uh, very very rough and they do not provide uh, good uh, slow uh, good flow so instead of 0.01 I'm increasing their value to 0.1 planning Zen for both impervious and pervious areas and I'll save this again this is uh, uh, just an exercise and therefore uh, the data has been modeled and the data has been arranged in such a way just to show the impact of changing n. For your site, you need to uh, select the end based on your site features. So I'll go back and check what. Is, so I'll go back and run the software first, and let's see what is uh, happening to the graph now. Uh, let's see the convolute and check what is. So now, if you see, my observed data is also slowly. You know that uh, the that uh, the end of my observed data is also tapering. I can go and change uh, some of some other values of uh, n, and I can also uh, experiment the same thing with the other the other parameters like the width, uh, the roughness, and depression storage. Uh, but before that, uh, what I'll quickly do is I'll go back and uh, calculate my NSC for this. So again, going and selecting the data and opening. Excel sheet. So let me open an Excel sheet. Let me quickly go back and open an Excel sheet. <coughs> so again, this is computed versus observed. So for uh, my NSC, I need to first get the difference of computed minus observed. Again, I'm interested only in the first 12 values because therein is my data. Just a small change. So this is the first twelve values of NSC, and again I can check this is this minus the last value. So this is squared, and now next is uh, what I need to do is calculate the difference of observed value minus average observed value. So this is average of all the observed uh, values. This is all observed and I can square this and here is my value so again I'm locking these fields and now I'll get the sum so sum of this and similarly sum of the other side now if I now calculate uh, NSC as 1 minus the numerator minus denominator I get a value of 0.83 so now my model is much more closer to the observed value what I would recommend is at the end of this lecture you uh, have a tutorial uh, you can go back and try different methods uh, to get as close to or the best value of NSC for the given for the observed data it will be fun learning the best value of NSC is uh, as close to one as you can get uh, by trying different parameter combinations thank you